In today's video, we are going to go through 2000's American superhero thriller, Unbreakable, where a man learns something extraordinary about himself after a devastating accident. Spoilers ahead, you have been warned. Before we get into the video, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. The year is 1961, and the movie opens at a Philadelphia department store where a woman gives birth to a boy and names him Elijah. There happens to be a doctor around the store. He takes the baby in his arms, but his smile fades as he asks if they dropped him. The mother and the people surrounding her answer no, only to be told that the baby's limbs are broken. Present day, David Dunn is traveling from New York to Philadelphia in a train. The engine of the train keeps getting louder and the train speeds far more than the limit. The passengers panic. David wakes up in an emergency room. The doctor by his side asks him basic medical questions and then inquires the position of his train seat. He says his seat was by the window in the passenger car to which the doctor looks at him funny. The train had derailed, causing the accident, and David was the only survivor with no broken bones. He has no wounds on him, not even a scratch. As he comes out of the emergency room, his son and wife hug him, while people around stare at him. An anomaly, a miracle. At home, his wife Audrey asks about his interview in New York. He says he didn't get the job, but still plans on moving there. They are going through marital problems, which is why they sleep in separate rooms. When David is leaving the memorial service for the victims of the East Rail train accident, he finds an envelope on the windshield of his car. The paper inside is embossed with the words, limited edition. There's only one sentence written inside the fold. How many days of your life have you been sick? He goes back to his job as a security guard at a university football stadium. He asks his supervisor to check the number of sick days he had taken. His supervisor, having heard of the accident, gives him a $40 raise and confirms that he's not taken a single sick day. Back home, he asks his wife when was the last time he was sick. She says she doesn't remember. In the past, in West Philadelphia, young Elijah sits before a TV with a fractured arm. His mom urges him to get out, but he fears he'll get hurt more. He's called Mr. Glass at school because he breaks like glass. She tells him that there's nothing he can do about his condition and that he cannot spend his entire life afraid and hiding. His mother gets him a present but sets a condition. If he wants it, he has to get it from the bench across the street. With her encouragement, he crosses the street and sits on the bench to open the present wrapped in a purple paper. It's a comic book. His mother tells him that every time he wants to come out to the bench, she'll keep one on it. David and his son reach the limited edition art gallery. They meet the owner, Elijah Price, who had sent the letter to David. While chatting with Price, David says he's most probably never been sick or injured in his life. But his son, Joseph, tells Price about a car accident in college, the reason he can't play football anymore. Elijah Price has studied comic books his entire life. The inspiration of the superhero narrative comes from true experiences that get covered up with cartoons and the commerciality of the industry. He had observed man-made disasters and accidents, but never had he heard the word sole survivor until the East Rail train accident. He tells David about his condition, osteogenesis imperfecta, where the bones have low density which make them brittle. He always thought there was someone on the other end of the spectrum, someone with above average strength, someone who will protect others. David believes that Price just wants to take financial advantage. The envelope gave him hope. He reached out for a solution and is reasonably put off by Price's theory. At night, he digs up newspaper cutouts of his football career and the subsequent car accident. Audrey and David talk about their broken relationship. She says that she wants to work on their marriage again, adding that she's so thankful that he survived the car crash. Price visits him at the stadium, supported by a glass cane. He finds it interesting that David chose to be a security guard, a profession of protection. As they stroll around the stadium, David has a hunch that a man in a camouflage jacket is carrying a gun. When he starts searching the people going in, the man separates from the line and leaves. Price asks David if he has powerful instincts. He explains that superpowers in comics are just an exaggeration of instinct. David argues that he could be wrong about the gun. Price leaves the stadium and follows the man to prove his theory. As he gains on him, he falls down a staircase and yells in pain, his glass cane shattering beside him. At the very moment, he sees a flash of a silver gun on the man. David was right. After work, Joseph tags along with his father to help him work out. He puts 250 pounds on the weights. That's the most David has lifted while bench pressing. Joseph says he'll take off the weights, but adds 20 more. David reprimands him for it, but they keep adding as much as he can lift. By the end, David lifts 350 pounds. Elijah is in a wheelchair due to his fall. He visits David's wife, a physical therapist, as a patient. Audrey indulges him when asked about how she met her husband. They keep chatting and Elijah ends up telling her how he discovered David and his condition. He tries to make her see what he sees in David. Meanwhile, David gets a call from Joseph's school saying he's hurt. 
He sits with the old principal as she recollects David's drowning incident from his childhood, one he doesn't remember until now. Joseph explains how he hurt himself as a result of thinking he was like his father. When Audrey is telling David about Elijah's visit, Joseph finds his dad's gun and bullets. He tries to shoot David to prove Elijah's theory that he cannot get hurt. Audrey tries to talk him down. David tells him about the drowning incident. When Joseph doesn't comply, David threatens to leave the house if he shoots him. That gets him to lower the gun and the family breathes a sigh of relief. David meets Elijah, who accuses him of faking his car accident injury to avoid success in football for marriage. David shares the pool incident of his childhood with him, disproving his theory. Then they decide to end their communication forever. David and Audrey go out on a date. When they come back, there's a voicemail from Elijah. In it, he says they may be on the opposite end of the spectrum, but their common weakness is water. A flashback plays of him saving Audrey from the car crash. A man asks if they're hurt. Audrey's injured on the legs, but David doesn't answer. In the present, he calls Price and confesses that he's never been injured. He tries to develop his instincts by going into a crowd. When he comes in contact with someone, he can see their worst deed. He lets people rush past him and see some of the terrible things people have done. Hit and run, theft, and molestation. He's overwhelmed by seeing the worst of people. A maintenance man walks by and David sees a vision of him breaking into a house and killing a man. He follows the murderer on a rainy night to that very house. He sees flashes of the crime as he walks in. He steps into a bedroom where he finds the victim's daughter's handcuffed inside the closet. David helps them escape. Before he can untie the wife in the next room, the murderer finds him and pushes him from the balcony, in a pool, almost drowning David. Luckily, the daughters save him. He goes back to fight and ends up killing the murderer. Then he unties the wife. He comes home and seeks comfort in the arms of his wife after the traumatic experience. Next morning, Joseph enters the kitchen and David shows him the newspaper in which the last night's event is reported. Joseph tears up. David visits Price's exhibition and meets his mom. She quotes her son. There are villains of two kinds, ones who fight with hands and ones who fight with the mind. He follows Elijah deeper into the establishment. Elijah has the day's newspaper in his hands. David confesses he didn't feel sadness today. When they shake hands, he sees the worst of Price. He discovers that the accidents in the city were caused by Price only to find someone like David. He sees drafts and plans as evidence of his guilt in the back room. In the end, David leads the authorities to Price, who's then kept in an institution for the criminally insane. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to our channel to see more of these movie summaries.